Welcome back. My first guest is Clarkstown Highway Superintendent Bob Malone. Welcome, Bob. Good afternoon, George. Happy to have you uh, here on the program. Uh, you just recently reelected. You're into your second term now as Clarkstown Highway Superintendent, and you're doing a fabulous job. Thank you, George. Uh, it's, it's always great to have you on. But um, let's let's give our uh, residents and our viewers an opportunity to learn a little bit about you. So just give us a, a little thumbnail sketch about. Um, your background, where you you know born and raised, how long you've lived here, you know. Sure, I was born in New York City, Manhattan. We moved up in 1962, so I've been a Clarkstown resident since. I grew up in New City, went to Clarkstown North High School, graduated in 1977. Um, I worked at Verizon Communications for 25 years as a lineman in the construction department. I was also a union representative there for I think 17 years. Um, I was a business agent, secretary, treasurer. Uh, I retired from Verizon when I won my election here in uh, 2020, 2019, I think it was, right? Um, so I've been in construction my whole life. I had my own contracting business for 10 years. Um, so I've been around construction my whole life. I have a Class, C, a Class A license for CDL. So I have operated most of the equipment that's at the highway department. And I thought with my leadership skills as a, a business owner, running my own business, and also uh, being a union representative, um, I was perfect for the task. Yeah, and, and the residents agreed you, you want a, you want a, a clear victory um, uh, and again uh, re-elected uh, um, without opposition in uh, just last November, which is uh, great. So you, you're going to be on the job again for another two years here uh, in Clarkstown and, and you really, you've done a lot of great things over in the highway department really trying to revitalize some of the, um, some aspects of the building. I know we're working on a few things there and you know we've got a lot of stuff that you're going to do a little bit of a recap on but why don't we just talk about the winter we're coming near the as this show is airing um, we're going to be coming towards the end of the winter season kind of you know preparing for the spring just why don't you give us a little bit of a recap so our residents know what goes into clearing the snow in the town of Clarkstown well it's um when we get out of leaf we're, we're doing leaves right up until Christmas week so depending on the weather it, it depends on what we're going to be doing. We, we gear it up for leaf. The trucks are, are, are equipped for leaf, picking up leaves. But if there's a snowstorm in between, we have to switch gears, throw the plows on, and get going. But this year, we were lucky. Uh, the leaves, the, the weather was good till, right up until Christmas time. Um, so we have to prepare the trucks and the, with the snow plows, salt spreaders, and uh, you know, do all the maintenance and make sure they're ready to go. Um, we have sidewalk machines. Um, we just purchased two new ones, thanks uh, to Senator Melnick and uh, uh, Assemblyman Zabrowski. So um, there's a lot of equipment that needs to be maintenance and getting ready to go for the snow. Yeah, and, and you have uh, how many plow routes? 56 plow routes. And so the typical plow route is, you know, how many miles a, um, roughly? We have 310 ma miles of road, so it was about six miles. Uh, there's 1,400 roads in the town, mm -hmm. so uh, it takes about four, four to five hours, depending on how much snow we get, to, to actually finish a plow route. So that happens after the last snowflake falls. Right, and, and they're plowing, because we'll often get this. We, well, sometimes our residents will call and say, you know, nobody's been down my street, and, and we know that's not the case. They're plowing throughout the storms. We have GPS on all the trucks, right? So you Correct. could actually tell where where these trucks are at any given moment, correct? Yeah, how, where the truck was, how fast they're going, because we do get some complaints that maybe the truck was going a little too fast down the road. But the when you plow a road, people don't understand, when you plow the road, you have to make sure you get enough speed to actually throw the snow off the road. Right. And depending on if it's heavy snow or a light snow, the, the driver will adjust his speed for that reason. Right, and so it, it, it's it's, Without fail, I've seen it a bunch of different times where we'll have residents that will call and say, hey, you know, they haven't been down my street, and then we'll get back to them and say, yeah, they came by your street at 1.17 in the morning, they were by there at 4 a.m. in the morning, and then they came back again, at, you know, and finished up at 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. And so literally, if it takes four hours to do an entire plow route, they may you, to go down the street, but continues to snow, and then they're gonna go back again, you know, throughout the entire storm, and then ultimately at the end, it takes like four hours to clean up the entire town. C correct, and then, uh, but also, the, like this last storm we had, the, we got like four inches of snow, but it started 11 o'clock at night, 
and didn't go. It went to like five, I think, two o'clock in the afternoon the following day. So the cl the truck is not going to continually plow. It's very small amount of snow. Right. So um, we did some salting prior, and then we do the salting at the end. Right. So, <clears throat> so uh, why, don't, why don't you just give us a little bit of a, uh, an overview or recap? I mean, paving. That's really been a focus of my administration. I know we're working closely on it. I mean, we're trying to do like 30 miles of, of roads a year. We're trying to really get ourselves down to a 10-year paving cycle or less at 310 miles. Um, so we're right in that area where we need to be. So maybe we could talk a little bit about what goes into uh, preparing the paver road and, and, and the paving work that's being done. Yeah, um, that, this program is, was instituted by you. So I, when I came in, it was already going. Um, last year we did, uh, we did how many miles? I think we did 23 miles of roads. We spent $3.9 million on the roads. Um, this year we're, gonna, we're planning to do the same. Um, but with, before we, plot, we actually pave a road, we have to go out and check all the drainage and all the catch basin, raise the manhole covers and things like that, it's necessary. And that is, takes, could take a very long time depending on how bad the drainage is because it makes no sense to, to uh, do a surface treatment on a road and the drainage is no good underneath. So we have to make sure the infrastructure underneath the roads are done first. And then we have to decide, depending on how bad the road is, whether we do a, uh, what kind of process we do because there's a few processes that we do on the roads, whether it's a mill and pave, a PPSD as a one inch overlay or micro paving. Mm -hmm. And again, that depends on how many, uh, how bad the road is. Right. So that's, you know, we do. And, and then the other thing, you also have to clear, make sure the utilities are not looking to come on in and, and um, do any work within that area because it's, there's like a prohibition for a number of years where they can't tear it up unless it's an emergency. Correct. correct. We, we send out a, a, a paving list a, that was preliminary paving list. You know, we sent it out just a few weeks, about a month ago, I think. Okay. And then we send it to the utilities. And again, like you just said, they have to make sure that they have no plans on doing any work on those roads because they can't open it for five years unless it's an, an emergency. Um, but what, what we've been doing in the last few years with my street inspector, it was, it was awesome. Um, we were able to secure a, a, almost, I think it was $980,000 from Suez and Orange and Rockland. When they did, a, um, they, they did their utility upgrade, instead of them going back and, and, and patching the roads, we, that road was on our list to be paved, so they gave us the money to um, finish the product. Right, so then we great. could do the entire road instead of just a patch, which yeah. is great. So we only got a couple of minutes left. Let's, we're moving into Great American Cleanup is coming up do a lot of work with, uh, with that, and we're getting into like the spring cleanup. So maybe you could just talk a little bit about uh, what goes into that, what you're gonna be doing with Great American Cleanup and with, uh, with you know, the spring cleanups as well. Okay, we, we've been working with uh, Keep Rockland Beautiful throughout the years. Um, what, so when, what happens is they'll have their programs, we'll, set, we'll, sponsor, um, we'll sponsor a lot of the program for them, and then we'll go around and we'll pick up all the um, bags that they accumulate. Um, I, offhand, I was, didn't get the information from them yet. We just had a meeting with them last week, but I'm, I'm sh not sure how much that tonnage they actually do. But we'll, we'll assist in the town and we'll go around and pick it up. Right. And then also, again, with the spring cleanups oh, the, and everything, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, there's a, the bulk, the bulk pickup and the, the leaf, you know, pickup as well. There's Advertising on that, and people need to know when they can when they can yeah. put out, right? Uh, yes, um, the bulk pickup is once a month, but we're, we're, right now we're preparing our yard waste for 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start, I think, on March 21st. Um, we're going to be doing it. We do um, we do it by areas. There's four areas. Um, we have a new interactive map that we just put up, um, which is is it's kept up to date daily. Unlike in the past, um, it was it was always a lag behind. So the interactive map is easy to use. You can go right on the map. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joe, you can edit this, right? I'm sorry. That's all right. That's okay. um, so we have a new interactive map. Yeah, we have a new interactive map um, that you can go right on to the website, town website. And you can, if you can know where your street is on the map, you click right on the map itself, or you can type in your address. And it'll give the ex exact date when we uh, anticipate the start to do your um, your area, and then the actual date that we were there. Right, which is great, and that's that's a real-time change, and it's uh, making the department more efficient as well. Sure. So if folks want to get in touch uh, with you at the highway super, uh, as a highway superintendent, how do they do that? They can 
Call the highway department at what yeah, number? Yeah, you can call the highway department at 845-624-7500, or you can email me directly at r.malone, M-I-L-O-N-E, at clarkstown.org. So, uh, Superintendent uh, Malone, I want to thank you. Uh, we've got a great working relationship. I, I think you're doing a phenomenal job as our highway superintendent, uh, best of my tenure. Um, either as, thank uh, you. You know, uh, here as supervisor. So, I really want to thank you for your uh, your efforts and, and really um, a lot of good things and innova innovation you're bringing to the highway department and just great services for the people of Clarkstown. Thank you, George. It's a pleasure working with you too. Thank you. Stay tuned. We will be right back.